Namaste, I'm Dr. Asmita Gimire. Currently, I'm working as a registrar in Grandi International Hospital in the Department of Obstetric and Gynecology. And here in Paradise class, I'm going to study obstetrics and gynecology classes. So, the, let's move on to today's topic. It is antipartum hemorrhage, which is one of the most common topics in obstetric and gynecology. So, what is antipartum hemorrhage? Antipartum hemorrhage is bleeding from the genital tract after the fetal viability. The definition I have shown in the slide over here, bleeding from the genital tract after the fetal viability is said as antipartum hemorrhage. Initially, 28 weeks was considered as fetal viability period, but now as you can see over the slide, it has been changed by WHO to 24 weeks, uh, by WHO to 22 weeks and in our country, 24 weeks. So what are the common causes of antipartum hemorrhage? It is placenta previa, abruptio placenta, cervical polyp, cancer cervix, circumvallate placenta and vasa previa. These are the few causes of antipartum hemorrhage. So the most common topic in antipartum hemorrhage is placenta previa. So what is placenta previa? As you all know placenta previa is implantation of placenta over the lower uterine segment. Here is the definition what I have said. There was a classification known as Brownie's classification in the older days. Now has been replaced by a newer classification. You need to know this newer classification rather than old one. So in the newer classification, there is only two, cla two categories. In the previous classification, as you can see over the slide, there were four classifications. Whereas in the newer classification, there is two classifications. Placenta previa and low lying placenta. The placenta previa, as the term indicates, the internal os is covered partially or completely by placenta, whereas in low lying placenta, the placenta is within 2 cm around the internal os. And the risk factor of placenta previa are previous history of placenta previa, multiparity and increased maternal age, There's, if there is any history of uterine surgeries. Previous uterine curatas, increased placental size, smoking. How will the patient present to you? So, the common presentation of placenta previa is, the patient will present to you saying that I have been having painless bleeding per vaginum. So, she will also tell you that when she is lying on the bed, she didn't have any symptoms. Whereas, when she woke up from the bed, she, had, she was in a pool of blood. So that is a classical presentation of placenta previa. Moving on to the signs, she will tell that she has been feeling dizziness, giddiness. This is because of the paler which has resulted of the bleeding. When you examine the patient, you can see that the size of the uterus corresponds to the period of amenorrhea and the uterus is soft and tender. The other signs are as the placenta has been implanted in the lower uterine segment, so the fetal head cannot move down and there is malpresentation of the fetus. And there is a term known as Talworthy sign. This, is, this could be a questionnaire in your next exam. So what is Talworthy sign? When you compress the fetal head over the maternal pelvis, then you can find that there is decrease in the fetal heart sound. Whereas on Removing your pressure from the fetal head to the pelvis, you can see the recovery of the fetal heart sound. That is the style-worthy sign of placenta previa. And the thumb rule of placenta previa, which you should not forget, is that in placenta previa, vaginal examination should not be done. It is contraindicated. Now, moving on to the management. You know, in management, we have diagnosis and proper management treatment portion. In the diagnosis, how do you diagnose placenta previa? You can't do pervaginal examination, but you can have a diagnostic test that is transvaginal sonography. For the management portion, it is divided into two portions. Expected management and there is active management. Expected management is also known as McCaffin regimen. So, Sometimes you get a question that, what is McCafe regimen? So you will have the option and you have to choose among them that it is an expected management in case of placenta previa. So what are the indications of active, 
expected management in case of, case of placenta previa here i have listed it down there's no any vaginal bleeding fetus is less than 37 weeks size the patient is hemodynamically stable the ctc is reactive and there is no any fetal anomaly however if this expected managements are not met you have to move on to the active management that is Active management indication I have this active bleeding. The patient is hemodynamically unstable and is shock. The patient has fetal distress and there is anomalous in the US. In this case, you can't go for McCafe regimen, you have to do the surgery immediately. So, as I've already said, surgery immediately. The thumb rule of placenta previa is that in case of placenta previa, there's no normal vaginal delivery. If you get questions in uh, your exams, uh, like what is the management portion for the placenta previa, then you have to say that you have to go for caesarean section. There, there's no other second thought. There is caesarean section, which is the only management in case of placenta previa. The other question that could come in your exam is that what is the most common complication in case of placenta previa? So, in case of placenta previa, you can expect postpartum hemorrhage. It is the most common co complication in case of placenta previa. The most common fetal complication in case of placenta previa is low birth weight baby. So, the next topic as we move on, the, that is abruptio placenta. As we all know, abruptio placenta is the separation of the normal situated placenta from the uterus due to various causes and here's the same definition as I've said and it is also known as accidental hemorrhage or premature separation of the placenta. What are the risk factors? There are various risk factors you know that increase maternal age, increase parity when there is sudden decompression of the uterus due to twin pregnancy and in hydroaminos these are the Few risk factor in case of abruptio placenta. Abruptio placenta has been divided into three different types that is rebuild type, consult type and mixed type. As you can see from the definition from the word itself meaning if it is a rebuild type the pervasional bleeding is seen outside. If it is a consult type then bleeding cannot be seen outside. In a mix there is some amount of bleeding outside whereas some amount of bleeding is concealed inside the uterus. This is a phase classification. I guess you don't need to know this but at least you should know that the phase classification was once used to classify abruptio placenta. What you need to know is the recent classification which is Shear's classification of abruptio placenta. So the abruptio placenta patients it come upgraded into three categories. Grade 1 it is always mild in intensity and you uh, you identify it usually post operative period when there is amount around 150 ml 50 to 150 ml of clot posterior to the placenta that goes for grade 1 in grade 2 the patient will come with tenderness in the abdomen but the fetus is live when it comes to grade 3 the fetus is almost dead and in 3 category it is divided into 3a and 3b 3A is without coagulopathy and 3B is with coagulopathy. So how will the patient present to you? In placenta previa, as I've said, the patient will pay, present to you in bed uh, telling that I have woken up from the bed in a pool of blood. But here the patient will complain of severe tender abdominal pain. And she will tell that she has severe tight pain, she had history of fall injury or something like that or she had history of hypertension. So these are the ways you can distinguish uh, placenta previa from abruptio placenta. Here you can see the patient will complain of severe abdominal pain with bleeding which is not proportionate to the amount of loss. In the placenta previa I said the bleeding is proportionate to the amount of loss but in abruptio placenta the bleeding is not pre present appropriate to the amount of loss. So if you see pa paler in these patients, you will see the bleeding is less the, but the paler is more, more because it is of the concealed placenta previa. So the patient will also present with hypertension. If you see the frontal height of the patient, the uterus is more than the period of amenorrhea. Uterus frontal height will be more than the period of amenorrhea and the patient will if you palpate, the patient will be complaining of tender abdomen, but if you palpate also, you have, you can feel the tense tender abdomen. Sometimes the fetal heart rate cannot be 
heard in case of abruptio placenta so in the management active management is required in the placenta abruptio placenta because the delivery interval is very important had the delivery interval or if the delivery interval is of longer period then the patient can land up in dic or renal failure so one need to be very cautious for management of abruptio placenta so what is the management if the fetus is living then and there is chances of imminent delivery then you can opt for vaginal delivery but if there is no chances of imminent delivery then straight away go for cesarean section this could be your another questions which can come uh, like patient present with 38 weeks period of gestation and there is 7 to 8 cm and you suspect of abruptio placenta is multi gravida that in such cases you can go for vaginal delivery if there is an option however if patient comes at 38 weeks and you suspect it to be abruptio placenta and sees just one centimeter dilated then don't wait go for cesarean section these are the scenarios which can come in your exam so that you can uh, choose the multiple choices option based on these findings so the things which I have said, I have just differentiated it into two parts, placenta previa findings and abruptio placenta. So, if you say as a case basis, if a patient, suppose 26 years patient who gives history of previous uterine surgery, like previous cesarean section, comes to you complaining of pain, painless abdominal bleeding, painless pervaginal bleeding, then you can go for placenta previa. However, the same case, if she gives history of hypertension and tense, tender abdomen, then go for abruptio placenta. So these are the ways how you can distinguish and you can go for management. So you have to be very particular about the keywords. In placenta previa, the keyword is painless abdominal pain. In abruptio placenta, tense, tender abdom, abdomen with hypertension. So these are the keywords you need to know. Apart from this, there's a topic which you need to know is vasa previa. So, abruptio placenta and placenta previa are maternal bleeding, but vasa previa is a fetal bleeding which occurs due to velamentous insertion of the cord. And in this, there's a fetal blood loss of around 70, 70 to 100 ml. There, you can see the blood loss is much more, and you can see the Mortality in case of vasa previa is very high because it's the fetal blood loss. The mortality I mean is not of maternal, it is of fetal because the fetal blood loss is being there more. And how can you distinguish? Suppose a patient comes with pervaginal bleeding and you suspect it, the fetal heart rate is going down, you suspect it's something abnormal. Then you can test it with a test known as singles alkali test or apt test. So what is singles alkali test or apt test? You can get a question from here too. So the basic idea is that there's fetal hemoglobin which is SBF and that is adult hemoglobin HbA. Fetal hemoglobin is resistant to acid and alkali. So if you dilute the blood which comes out with sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, if the color does not change, if it is pink in color, then it is the fetal blood. You can go for option of vasa previa being the diagnosis. Whereas if it turns brown in two minutes, then you can choose that it could be abruptio placenta or placenta previa depending upon the conditions. So these are the few most common antipartum hemorrhage conditions. I guess you had a short knowledge about it. Thank you so much.